Hi and welcome to another e-learning video class. This is uh, Tony Brancatella and as I promised, there's another video coming. We're going to take a look more into what we started to look at uh, earlier on, which is uh, greetings. So let's take a closer look at greetings and uh, really delve into what uh, greetings is all about and the importance of how to greet customers and to make them feel uh, at home and certainly is like a home a store should be felt that way the ambiance of the actual store when we get into virtual merchandising we'll know more a little bit more about ambiance the music and how the store is laid out but also how the greeting is uh, done and how uh, the actual sales associates uh, Nonverbals uh, take place also. So this is very important to take a look at. So let's take a closer look. Just a quick uh, update or look back at the process of sales just to keep you in the loop. Sales process, uh, we're going to greet the customer. We're going to qualify the customer by asking a lot of questions. Imagine we're just in the actual greeting stage as we stand now. Uh, after qualifying, we need to determine what the customer needs are. And by doing that, we can actually have a four-step process in presenting the best possible product. Uh, afterwards, certainly, and not all the time, a certain trained sales associates will not have objections and the customer will uh, directly purchase the product and go from there. But in our case, to be trained properly, you need to know what to say and do. So we will all go through uh, objections and also how we're going to react to a customer's negotiation stance. And all stance also, uh, we're going to look at uh, proposing alternative products and finishing off by closing the sale. So there is the eight step sales process that we're going to look at in this competency in this module. So, greeting the customer. We already looked at this a little bit about how to greet customers and what to say, where to stand, uh, how to stand, how to look, how you should be as genuine as possible in the actual store, and uh, the proper greeting technique as the customer enters. We looked at the posture, and it shouldn't be a power pose. Uh, you should be on the side. The customer needs to have uh, the store entrance uh, or aisle way open to them and natural neutral smile I should say side stance also as genuine as possible when you have a smile and you are a genuine uh, it really shows it's very easy your, your nonverbals uh, they just come out and like I had mentioned as much as possible be yourself we talked a little bit about stress and how certain chemicals in our system play a part very important to be able to be genuine as much as possible, genuine smile. And the greeting technique, well, let's go over it again. Uh, I want you to memorize this. I think we, we really went at it last time and we, uh, we, we tackled this and uh, we don't want to stray from this. Uh, we don't go back to the how are you's, may I help you. We stay with this. Genuine smile, be yourself, hands on the side, side posture, good morning, welcome to our store if you want to name the store name. If not, just welcome to our store. My name is, again, we talked about how to say your name. You need to actually break the actual, your name down in syllables and stress them all the way through. If you have a T at the end of your name, you need to stress it. So this way, uh, certain names come out. Uh, if I take a name like Partik, which is a very difficult name in many cases, if you say it quickly, hi, my name is Partik, you won't know what, that, what I just said. So my name is Partik. In this way, the customer remembers that, your name, and can easily not have to say, what What did you just say? So again, the importance of breaking down syllabically your name so the customer remembers it. And the famous line that we're going to use right through that you need to, set to, to memorize, I will only accept this, I will not accept, uh, may I direct you, may I help you, or uh, can I do something for you? All of this informal language, may I direct you to something, is what we're looking for. So we looked at certain ways not to stand in a store and uh, how to block a customer's way. Again, uh, repeat what not to say and using the words of uh, 
how are you when you are not where uh, it's a very informal way of talking to a customer I know we hear it all the time but this is not what you should be saying can I help you can I help you how can I help you are you looking for something particular and also in French bonjour hi the famous line here in Quebec puis-je vous aider very difficult to say comment allez-vous again how are you in French uh, uh, is a line that's being used also but all of this is no uh, this is not what we want to hear we're going to be trained at the highest level when it comes to sales orientation and or the sales process and this is not what we want to do right now we're going to have responses the customer will respond in certain ways so let's say that there's three or four of them we're going to take a look at uh, the associate might say again may I direct you to something the customer will say yes could you tell me about this product or I am looking for this the customer will answer in a very positive positive way now if the customer does this wow cool now you're going directly to qualifying from here so customers asked to see a specific item and you can go directly to into qualifying the customer there is no other steps to be had but as we all know in the real world and, and we're going to use that line quite often in the real world a customer will say different things or give you a different uh, idea of what they're looking for or will not give you any idea of what they're looking for so customer might say or associate might say may I direct you to something customer will turn around and say I would really just like to look around now there's a whole bunch of the two or three techniques I want to talk to you about later on but before that let's just see what the responses are so response to this I would really just like to look around would be something like this please look around but it, again the word please is critical remember we talked about the highest level of formality in sales as much as possible we're not talking about being fun, too fun or being obsequious as we as we uh, as we wrote that on the board last time told you what that word means we do not want to be uh, obsequious but we do want to be formal so please look around but if you would tell me what you're looking for I'll be glad to try to tell you where it is again trying to tell is really important at this stage right because at no time did you imply you're going to help the customer again the word help we don't want to see it and or follow her or show her anything well at no time did you move from your original position right as much as possible you stay in your, in your position and you do not approach the customer so no matter what they respond or not respond in this case in response to uh, there is no movement on your part okay so this what it does it really in powers the customer when you tell them that you're going to try to tell them where to find it that really empowers the customer to uh, lower your power and heighten theirs again sales associate in a store always has the power and when you store in the store a customer walks in no matter what their uh, communication style is they, they don't have the power as much as the uh, a sales associate and we always need to level that off as much as possible and in this case you don't want to give away all your power but you do want to empower the customer so by saying try another one associate might you will say may I direct you something the customer will turn around can you tell me where I can find a product I read about fantastic now they're looking for help or looking for aid I should say so in this case it's right back here let me show you where it is so in this case also a very positive response now and not before go with the customer and also here we start qualifying continue to qualify exactly why they're looking for this specific product again here qualifying begins that's response number three may I direct you something no I just want to look at all your new products right so in this car I just want to look at this product uh, I just want to look at your phones. I just want to look at this specific bowl or something like that. So in this case, uh, the associate will say, "You will find them in the display case." And the famous line in sales. Now, this line you might have heard this in movies quite often by detectives. If, if you watch movies, as the detective is about to step out and leave the suspect, uh, thinking that they got away with murder, 
then at the last second will turn around and say, oh, by the way, I have one more question. And we'll put the, put the actual, uh, put doubt in the actual mind of the suspect. Well, in a way, you don't want to put doubt in the mind of the suspect. What you want to do is have the, sus have the customer, I was going to say suspect, have the customer look at you and say, oh, what does he mean by, by the way? Because they're, they're intrigued right now. And since you are changing your voice, because you really have to change your voice here. Uh, you'll need to pause after you say you will never you will find them in the display case pause one two three oh by the way in a very excited manner while you are here there are other products that just arrived today let's say or there are two new extra products if you'd like again if you'd like the formality stays at a very high level i could point them out to you and then you could browse through our entire selection of new products so this again empowers the customer, takes it away from you, and shows that the customer uh, can direct themselves, kind of a thing, till they need more direction from you. So this is what you really want to do. Again, oh, by the way, gives more chance to keep the customer interested, and the communication that you have with the customer continues. Even when you say, oh, by the way, you haven't moved an inch. You are very very, very uh, it's neutral in your stance. This is very important that the actual nonverbals have to stay the same. So don't move until the customer moves off to look, then you will follow. Again, you do not lead, you follow. So that really the importance of, uh, of, of when it comes to uh, greeting, it's, it's really incredible how you begin the actual conversation with the customer uh, you need to really be authentic and, and you know we talked about being genuine but being authentic means it's yourself uh, really being yourself it's worthy of acceptance or belief based on fact conforming to an original form there's so many definitions that you could use for it, authenticity but really what it is is that you're not false you're true to yourself your personality and your character uh, I'll give you an example about the restaurant, uh, a waiter or waitress that was very obsequious at one point, and then when I saw them in the back, well, I went to the washroom or something, their, their attitude or character completely changed. When you see that, you know that there is a, there's an issue when it comes to their, uh, their actual, you know, worthy or, or authenticity. So it's very difficult to, to trust them and to get close to them in any way, shape or form. So really, you need to be yourself as much as possible. And again, when it comes to that, when it comes to stress, the stress is lowered. And it's very important to keep a very balanced uh, perception of what's going on around you because the day is long and you're going to meet a lot of people in one day and times five, times 10, times 20, and so on and so forth. So you need to keep uh, your level of stress at, uh, at a very controlled pace. So greeting, uh, very important because it gives you, uh, you know, we talked about first impression. Yes, it is a first impression, but more importantly, it is a lasting impression. And customers love that and they will come again. And it really doesn't cost very much. Uh, you know, we've talked about training, uh, training sales associates. First and foremost, if you can do this and uh, have an understanding of what, how to greet in this, in this manner, and understanding how the, the experience becomes positive for both sides and it's really a stress-free interaction well greeting becomes easy and it becomes repetitive and simply to do and you become very uh, positive in what you do in your job and you find that you become more proactive and the chances of uh, being promoted will automatically follow you again greeting importance you need to know what's going on. What I mean by that is what's happening in store. So you watch the customer come in. How's the customer when he walks in? You know, uh, there's, there's, we're going to look at special different techniques that you're going to have to look at. But what's really important, if you don't see what's happening and be empathetic with what the situation calls for, if the customer, if it's raining outside, the customer looks frustrated, the customer drops something, uh, the customer is carrying a lot of packages, customer uh, is, seems to be in a hurry or lost or uh, angry. All these things come into play. Here, what you need to do is see what's happening. So you have, again, the power in the store, but you also have to have the presence. You have to have presence and see what's going on 
around the customers. Be attentive. So let's look at certain techniques when it comes to that. And to be attentive, you really have to be, again, we've talked about authenticity and to be, to be genuine. It really has to show you in, in the way you are. Okay? So let's look at four different uh, uh, various uh, greeting techniques. I'm going to make this too long as much as possible. I'll make these videos <laughs> more than half an hour. <clears throat> Listening to myself talk for a long, long time could be... Yeah. So let's, not, let's try to go as quick as possible. Shut up, Tony, and move on. Great. There is four, vary, four greeting techniques that we're going to look at. We're going to look at small talk, familiarity, commonality, and also orientation. Now, small talk, it really is really small talk. In many cases, small talk uh, does establish a human connection but again, small talk is not easy to do all the time and not necessarily has to be used all the time. A small talk is very limited in many cases. In many cases, you might not even say anything at all. So again, you have to be uh, aware of the surroundings of what's going on. You have to grasp as quickly as possible what the communication style. We're going to take a look at communication styles a little bit deeper on, but just to give you an understanding of how to look at it very quickly, is what you've got to do, there are really four basic communication styles. You automatically, when you see the customer, have to eliminate uh, two communication styles that do you think right away they are not. Not that they are, they are not. So you can take a look at the other ones and, and pay more attention to the other two communication styles. So you'll be not as wrong as you think. You'll be probably right on. If you eliminate two, try to guess what they're not instead of trying to guess what they are. When you do this, you're able to understand at what level of small talk you can use. In many cases, you might not be able to use it at all. In some cases, it depends if they are expressive or amiables, and even sometimes uh, when it comes to analyticals, you can use small talk. And directors or drivers, uh, you can also use small talk, but there again, it has to be done in a specific manner. Again, small talk, very small. The weather, you see them coming in, it's raining, it's snowing, uh, it's not, it's a beautiful day, whatever. It's very easy to open up and say something about the weather, a beautiful day for shopping, uh, you know, or not. <laughs> you know, it's, you can be a little bit, uh, a little sarcastic, maybe you can be, but, but in a very funny way, you can. Humor is small talk in a very high level. Once you're able to do that, and just uh, analyze the situation, analyze what uh, their communication style is, and uh, how they will respond to your small talk. In many cases, they might not respond, so then you just <clears throat> quiet down, may I direct you to something, okay? Next one is trying to be familiar with uh, customers. When you are familiar with customers, what does that mean? It means that uh, when you've seen the customer before. Now, of course, uh, you need to have seen the customer before. If you haven't and you fake it and you say, well, it's nice to see you again, the customer might turn around and say, well, I don't know you and I've never been in this store. I'm from, I'm from Alaska or I'm from uh, the Yukon or whatever, just to give uh, partiality to Canada. But, you know, so you have to be truthful. It has to be, uh, you know, uh, and if you might not have recognized him, whatever, just say so. Oh, you look like someone I know. Well, yes, okay, say that. But be honest. Don't use this as a trick uh, to try to get, uh, you know, a greeting technique in. It's not going to work. It has to be truthful. It has to be authentic. It has to be real. Well, this, of course, it has to be have an established initial relationship. By having an initial relationship, uh, now there's you've, you've personalized the actual uh, uh, in, you know uh, interaction that you're going to have with this particular customer. So this is what consumers want. They want this because now they feel they feel unique. They feel individual, and they feel possibly that you're going to give them what they need or exactly what they need. You are not, you know, whatever that is when it comes to product or when it comes to making them aware of promotions or alternative products. And they feel a little bit closer to you. And you really close the gap, that famous gap we talked about, bridge the gap between you and the customer. So when you are familiar with a customer, it means that you are friendly and you are personal. 
but it does not mean you are friends. You need to know what to divide here. Staying friendly and personal is one thing. Trying to make them into your friends is another. Then all of a sudden you might see the customer react in a very different manner and you say, uh-oh, I did something wrong. So stick to the formality even here. Stick to the friendly and personable. Stick to who you are, the intensity of who you are, not that you're trying to be friends. If there is any possibility of becoming friends, it is certainly not your call. It is always the customer's call. So, what can you say? What brings, to, what brings you in to see us again? It's great to see you again. May I direct you to something? Well, come back. How you been? You can say this depending on the level of, of, of familiarity that you have. If, they, if it's a weekend and it's a Monday, you can say, did you have a good weekend? Uh, if they came in on a Monday or coming in for another, whatever product that is. Here again, humor, in some cases you could use and to, to, because you are very familiar with the customer. So be very careful with this, make it real, make it very formal and keep it formal, but always ask them, and you know, may I direct you to something? That line needs to always be said. Next one is commonality. Now commonality, uh, what does it mean? Well, there's something in common. And the only way you're going to have something in common is if you get close to the customer by using empathy. Now, by using empathy, you can share uh, or there's a connection that you could have or a shared value that you have with the customer. Again, formality still needs to be at a high level. So you're not talking about personal, personal, private experiences here, but it has to always be related to the product. The product is first. The commonality needs to be the product. It is not your experience that needs to take its place. Commonality, uh, again, it has to be formal and it has to stay formal right through. Even if the customer goes into personal stories about themselves, it is not your place to break that formality level and do that in the store. Again, in the store stays in the store and the empathy is empathy for the situation of the product. So the commonality is the product. So again, be specific, be personal when it comes to the actual product, be authentic and don't remain authentic when it comes to that. So the personal experience has to do with the actual product. Things like, again, if you have something in common, you might say, I like your jacket. Uh, how are you na navigating that traffic? If you, if you, if you had a, you, you know, in the morning you, you had a big issue with coming into the traffic, a very simple, here again, you're, you're basically taking small talk and putting it in, making it into commonality. So it's a very simple thing to say. Are you managing to stay dry with all this rain? Are you enjoying all the sun? You can say these things too. And you can take it a step level when it comes to about, you know, what commonality about a product that you have. Yes, I have the same product and things like that. Again, these have to be true. They have to be authentic. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Next one, orientation. Orientation really is acquainting customers to the space in your store. We talked about the greetings before, what to say and the responding and about where, by the way, where this is. Well, this is what orientation is. So orientation really is, uh, it's very personal. Uh, you know, you can, you can say something like, I like to start this part of the store and I work my way around. If you don't want me to follow you around or you don't, you don't, you don't want my, uh, my service, take your time to look around. Certainly you can say, or please take your time to look around. And you can always follow up and see them with, uh, by saying things like, would you like a basket? Can I free up your hands? Uh, again, you need to ask. We went through these situations we did when role playing class, uh, where if you see a customer walk in and drops bags or, or is having issues with, their, with the door, it is not up to you to run and open that door. You need to ask. So this is orientation. Uh, are you finding what you thought you would? All these type of questions really uh, orientates the customer into the store. Again, you need to stay formal. You need to stay authentic. You need to stay genuine. Again, the stress level stays low. It's easier to have relationships with customers, to find the empathy, to find the communication style, and more importantly, to find their need so that when you get to present the product, you present the right one. We'll get to that step later on. We're still in the initial step. So 
Remember, attitude counts. We talked about attitude. We can talk to, about attitude right through. Proactiveness, attitude. Uh, I'll keep saying authenticity. I'll keep saying uh, being genuine, but this is what it is. Be present. Be seen. Don't hide behind counters. Always be available. Be Do your job, basically. These are, these are simple things that you have to do. Uh, stay clear of the customer's path. Uh, neutral smile as much as possible. And presumptions. We're going to talk about presumptions in tomorrow's, uh, in tomorrow's or the next video, I should say. You need to confirm them. You cannot presume things. So the customer, how the customer is dressed or what the customer's product is or what the customer's needs are. So presumptions, tuck them in your back pocket. And again, consider all customers equal. Do not, uh, you know, just because their communication styles are different, you, you get along better with, uh, let's say, expressives. When you see an identical, does not mean that you have to not look at them easily, equally the same way. So yes, consider all customers equally. And how do you get good at this? Well, practice, practice, practice. This is what makes you good at anything, and it certainly helps you out here. Uh, when you do a lot of role play and you look at yourself on video, it really helps you understand what, uh, what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right and how to even get better at that. So greeting is only the beginning, the very important beginning of, a, of a building a positive uh, communication with the customer, right? Again, I'm not going to stop. I'll tell you again and again. Be very genuine. Be yourself. The stress will stay down. And to quote somebody named Vince Lombardi, if you like football, practice does not make perfect. Only perfect makes perfect. And just to finish off, I like mottos. This is the only way you're going to be able to get a beautiful relationship or a beautiful friendship, if you want to call it that, with your customers and to have a fantastic experience in sales and to understand really the depth of what sales could offer to you, offer to you as a career and as a life, a life uh, changing experience. And uh, my experience has really changed me a lot when it comes to sales. And I got a feeling it would do the same thing to you. All right, take care and we'll see you next time.